Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, this is, my name is Courtney and this is Bailey. Um, I have not done one of these in a while. Um, I have been kind of focusing on my wellness on my YouTube channel, but today I have felt like I have been tapped into a channel all day long and I feel like it is a lot longer than a three minute TikTok video would allow and I don't like doing a million parts to my readings So I figured I would jump back on YouTube and do one of my long-winded readings um, For the first time in a while Bailey being super present with me today. He's been in my lap for all of my readings um, I, I just kind of use him as confirmation that I am in fact sitting with a channel and He's back for today's reading. So we're gonna use Bailey and you know my guides. I have all kinds of crystals and pictures of my childhood dog and everything here to help me channel like I am fully surrounded so I want to do something that I haven't done before and I want to use two different tarot decks I couldn't decide between the two of them and I feel like I am being called to use one to clarify the other so I'm gonna start with the Rider tarot deck and then I'm gonna use the Soul Cats Companion tarot deck to clarify anything that doesn't really make sense um, or anything that needs further explaining with this deck. Um, the energy that I'm tapping into, <laughs> right away we have the Wheel of Fortune, is a period of transformation. Now, there's there are a lot of moving parts with this. So. I'm going to just tra channel straight through. I will take breaks every now and then to take a sip of my water um, and to catch my breath because I will just kind of jump in and just kind of go straight through with what I'm getting um, from my guides specifically. I called in my own personal guides for this. I feel like I have the best um, time with my personal guides. Um, I feel like I can understand them the best rather than like channeling a specific person or energy. So um, this is, again, this is like a, a, a puzzle with a lot of pieces to it. And I feel like the overall energy is one that is, um, it's about transformation and, and this kind of, all the sides of transformation. I guess you could say like your point of view another you know other people's point of view um there's a lot of different energies here um i do feel like this has a really big backstory to it so i'm just gonna kind of take it one chapter at a time i'm sorry um, i'm gonna try to take it one chapter at a time here and channel as clear as possible but let's just get a couple cards here and then we will kick things off We've got a lot, a lot happening here. <laughs> All right, I want to get one more. <laughs> Interesting. We've got the tower. Um, it, it initially came out in reverse, so I will keep it out in reverse, although it did hold it up right side up. Um, oof, okay. Okay. So top and bottom of the deck energy, we have the Ten of Swords and the Ten of Cups. So this is two very um, strikingly different energies. One is of total defeat, heartbreak, loss, separation. The other, um, I feel like it's in reverse because it's out there and it's ready to be discovered, but you're not in a place where you can really see that. I feel like you're more in a place of this Ten of Swords, but you're seeking out this Ten of Cups energy. I feel like the reason why the tower is coming out in reverse is because you are other people's tower moment. I really, I really feel this. Um, I feel like you are the type of person who works really hard to keep things afloat for others. Um, I think that you have so much to give, you have such a big heart, and you have such a willingness to bend before you break. Um, it, I think you have a lot of patience. I think it takes a long time for you to get to your breaking point, um, and therefore it takes you a long time to move in a new direction. I think that this allows people to get used to your energy. 
I feel like you've been somebody who's been in service to others for a very long time, whether this is within your family, whether this is work connections, whether this is just people in general. I feel like you are somebody that almost prides yourself um, on being in service to others. I think that you are somebody who provides stability for others. You give wisdom, you give strength, you give money at times. Like you are just a beacon of strength for a lot of people. I think that you are a lot of people's safety net. However, there is another side to you that I really think other people underestimate. And that is your spiritual side. That is your connection to yourself and your inner voice. When I mean, when I say you are other people's tower moment, I, I feel like people get a different perspective of you than who you truly are. I feel like because you have such a big heart to you, you have such a, gen a generous nature to you, it almost makes people think that you're a little bit more naive than you are. I think that because you have all of this patience and you have like a lack of um, like a really intense temperament, I think you're a very calm personality and you, you I don't want to say you let a lot of things slide. Um, I think you can in certain situations, but a lot of things don't really bother you. So a lot of things that would bother another person, it you just kind of are like, whatever, because you have such a strong connection to that inner voice. Um, you have your own relationship with the self. I think you have your own relationship with your spirit guides or your spirituality. Um, and I think that you have a grasp of the bigger picture. And so a lot of little things don't bother you. I do think that this causes other people um, to take everything that they can from you while they have you. I think that people... Um, I don't think people expect to lose you. I think that this is kind of a cycle that you have dealt with most of your life where you will become a part of a structure where I don't think that you're necessarily like the main part of it. I think that you are a hefty part of the background. So you're like the manager, but you're not the boss. You are like the, the stage manager, but you're not the actors or the actresses in the actual production. Like you have a really key role, but you're not like the main person. So I feel like people use you as like their right hand man. Um, you know, it's giving like major assistant energy. But the thing is, you're seeing the whole bigger picture much differently than the main characters, the main boss. Um, they think that they have you for the long run, but, and this isn't to say that you are, are using anybody at all. I think that your intentions with everybody you meet are so, 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 so pure. However, you have, and it's part of my language, but this is just how it's coming through. You have a really, really strong bullshit meter. And so when you know that you are being fed bullshit, you know that people are just, you know, taking what they can get from you um, for as long as they can get it, you start to sniff that out really quickly. But this is a part of your personality that because you have such a calm temperament, you internalize that first. You, you keep that to yourself. I think that you're very, very good at observation. You're very good at seeing everything with a bird's eye view. And so I think when you start to notice this, you start to plan your next phase of your life in private. You're somebody that keeps a lot of things to yourself. You're a very, very private person. And so it's almost like, you do all this planning behind the scenes and you don't really give any hint that you're bothered by anything that's going on because you're so focused on that next phase of your life. You have such, such a good in, like a inner voice. You have such a strong connection to that part of you. So when it comes time to break away from the people that you can sniff out their BS for miles, the people that are taking advantage of you, the people that are crossing your lines, crossing your boundaries, um, overextending you, when you get to a point where you have a solid plan that you are going to move into, it's that's when this tower comes in. It's like you blow up the worlds of other people because they're like, they're like, what? You know, like they, they're like, what are you, 
you like you of all people and so i think that you have it's very very like devil wears prada energy like you will soak up all of the information you can you will learn everything that there is to learn about your current position or your current you know environment relationships whatever it is you will do the best job of anybody that could possibly do it but when it's time for you to move on you will move on and I feel like that's the part of you that people really underestimate. And it's because you're so kind hearted. It's because you are so patient with other people. And it's because you are so willing and eager to learn and to help. You know, you have a natural tendency to want to help other people and to give back. Um, but people think that this is kind of like, they see it as like, oh, well, I've got them under control. I don't need to worry about them. They're not going anywhere. They are so wrapped up in what they're doing and what this is. It's like people don't think that you have this independence about you that you actually very much do. And so I think that this leads a lot of, I, I feel like this leads to different, hmm, what am I trying to say here? This is where I think think things get a little bit murky here because you have to understand that you're doing what's best for you. You are a good person. You are innocent in the pursuits that you are making. You are learning what you need to learn and you know, you are moving from one thing to the next in a way where you're not burning any bridges. You're not, you know, breaking any rules. You're not getting out of hand. You're not causing problems. But I think it still angers people when you move on from them because you are such a value. You are such um, like a key role in the business and the lives of other people that when they don't have you anymore, it's a big loss. And I think that the people that you've been around up until this point have kind of used you as their life source, you know, whether that's in interpersonal relationships, um, or business endeavors, it's been you that people kind of lean on for problem solving, for putting out fires, for, for, for keeping things afloat. And when you decide to do what's best for you, which is a decision that you have every right to make, people get aggravated about it because you, they didn't see this coming with you. It's almost like they're more frustrated by the blindsidedness than the action itself, because they can't, actually be mad at you for the choices that you're making. You're not doing anything to spite anybody. You're just deciding I've outgrown this. I'm moving on to the next thing. And so I feel like you kind of struggle with that because on one hand, it's like you are so in touch with your spiritual side that you know that this is what's best for you. But on the other hand, you do have like that heart to you and that, um, that kindness to you where you don't want to be mistaken as somebody who is, is you know, selfish or, um, you know, what am I, what am, what am I looking for here? You don't want to be the person, you don't want to be the bad guy in the story. I think you have a really hard time with being the bad guy or, or being the person that made somebody else upset. You know, I think there's this part of you that wants to keep everybody happy. You don't want to rock the boat, but it, when it comes down to would I rather have somebody else be secure in this situation and sacrifice my own wants and needs or would I rather put that energy into myself I think you know that you need to choose yourself but you have a really really hard time doing it and so that's where I see you're at I see you're at this in-between phase where it's like okay you you're, <laughs> you're depleted you have taken all that you um, are able to take from this current situation. You know that you have this 10 of cups waiting for you on the other side, but you're in this in-between phase where it's like, I don't want to have to go through this again. You know, like you, you've, you've been through this cycle so many times. You've, you've, I don't want to say you've done this to so many people because that sounds like it's malicious, but <laughs> we have the Emper the Empress and the Four of Wands. You know, the only way that you're going to get this, you know, abundance in the celebration and this next chapter is to pull that energy inward and be the empress. It's to step into that empress energy. Um, I do feel like this is a cycle that does have to repeat itself. You do have to do this again. Um, I feel like there is a situation um, or relationships that you are currently in right now that... Um, you're 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 uprooting your own foundation again 
and you know that this is what's best for you. I also feel like you have a very like gypsy spirit almost. I don't also, ugh, I feel like somebody told me that I shouldn't say that word. Like it has just like a negative connotation to it and I don't want to offend anybody, but I feel like you're very free spirited. You don't want to stay in one spot attached to one thing your whole life. Um, You're innocent in this. You're innocent. You're you're doing what's best for you. You are innocent in this. I'm seeing uh, fireflies with the four of wands. There's fireflies everywhere. Um, Nine of pentacles and the world. Let me just take a sip of my water. <laughs> Bailey. I'm taking a look at this Empress card and you've got a lot of energies that are looking up to you right now. There, You've got a lot of energies that are, are looking at you. I want you to take a good look at this card. You've got a lot of energies that are looking at you and that are leaning on you, but you're kind of focused in a different direction. You're not tapped into this anymore. You're not connected to this energetically anymore. I think that's, I think that's why you confuse a lot of people is because you are somebody that moves based on ener energy, based on energetic ties. And I feel like your energetic ties get broken internally long before you take the action of breaking them off. You know, this could be even with breakups too. Like you may, you may just like cut yourself off internally and shut yourself down and just completely go inward while being in the presence of other people. And people may just have no idea what's going on in your head. And then all of a sudden you're deciding, okay, this is the time I'm, I'm breaking away. I'm doing my own thing. And people are just like, Huh? Like, I thought everything was all set. It's happening again. <laughs> that, that's what I'm getting here. It's like this, you, you are experiencing a time very soon where you know it's time to move forward. Um, this is going to stop somebody else in their tracks. I am just, I'm going to be honest about the situation. This is going to stop, stop another person, person in their tracks. I'm seeing the chariot here. You're the bird on this cat. The cat is, is. The cat is like moving with the chariot and it's moving at a pace where like they think everything's under control, but like you're not in their point of, you're not in their, their vision. They're, they're looking forward. They're not really paying much attention to you. They don't really understand that you can just fly off at any moment. I think that they think they have you secured. And I think when you break this down by flying off in your own direction, I, I feel here's what I'm actually feeling. You have to forgive me with this kind of channeling. Like I, I go one direction and then it becomes deeper and then it kind of makes all these pivots. You're, you're planning your own route. Like you, you're attached to this person or this, this environment, whatever this is, you're attached to this, but you're kind of not, you know, like you're physically there but you're, you're looking in two different directions. You have two different plans. Um, this just hasn't been communicated just yet, but you do have a plan to kind of fly off in your own direction. You just have to get yourself mentally and physically ready to do this before you kind of confront this or break the news or I don't want to say ghost because I, I feel like that's not this type of situation. This is going to cause a little bit of karma for the people that you are, are breaking it away from. 
they've gotten really used to your energy. They've gotten really used to using you however they need you to, or they need to. Um, and the thing is, is like they just, they've kind of, the thing about this situation is that I'm feeling like it's a little bit chaotic. You know, they, they've kept things really chaotic. They haven't really cleaned up their act. They haven't really gotten an organization um, or like a like a plan in place to better themselves and better the situation because they've had you there to like put out the fires and to, you know, clean up the mess and keep things ready to go and all set. Um, you have been kind of in the way of them improving themselves and their own structure. Like they've created something that needs work, but because you've been the glue that has held all this together for such a long time, they haven't really done anything that needs to get done in order to be successful without relying on you or another person, um, but specifically you. Um, you being removed from the situation forces this person or, you know, this environment, whatever it is, to confront the structure that has been not very solid for a very long time. So this is going to cause some reactions. This is going to cause some stress. And it's really, really, really important that you do your best to understand that this is not your stress. This is not your stress. This is not your fire to put out. This is not your responsibility. I feel like... Interesting. <laughs> we have the world. Let me just get these cards out. I'm getting... I feel like each column here has a different... Has a different energy to it. Um, interesting. Yeah, we have the Hierophant at the bottom of the deck. I'm, I felt the need to keep the Ten of Swords out because I feel like it's going from you are in this Ten of Swords position to another person in the Ten of Swords position. But I need you to understand that you're not doing anything malicious. You, this isn't malicious. This is not malicious. This is energies that are sitting in kind of like a power trip. They, they're kind of having a power trip right now. And this is what I mean by your other people's tower moments. You are the person in people's lives that without even really doing anything other than what's best for you, puts people in their place. You so strongly put people in their place and it's almost like they get a whiplash in the process because they don't expect it to be you. They don't expect it to be you that puts them in their place. Um, and so I think that that's kind of what's happening here. You're moving into a new phase of your life. With the world card here, you are very protected. We have all of these very strong, um, opinionated energies um, coming out on the outside of this. I, I, I see these energies on four corners of the, of the cards. Um, I feel like these could be either people from your past or people that you have walked away from um, in order to move forward in your world. You are very, very protected in this decision. By stepping into the Empress energy, you are doing what's best for you. You're moving on to kind of just like a a phase of your life when you, you can kind of go anywhere you want. Um, this could be moving into entrepreneurship. This could be moving on and, you know, being on your own, you leaving home for the first time, like whatever it is, you have the ability to do whatever it is that you want. Interesting. You no longer have authority that you need to follow. I think that that's another thing here is like the people that you have done this to. And when I say do this to, I, I mean, kind of like, shake up their life. I don't, again, I want to stress the importance of the fact that you're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything wrong. There is no need. I feel like there's this natural sense of guilt because that's just who you are as a person, but you're not doing anything malicious. That's the thing. You're not. These people can yell at you. They can blame you. They can tell you that you're the reason that their world is crumbling, but that's just a projection of them not being prepared for this. They, they had all the time in the world to prepare for this. They have had all of the time and the resources with you doing what you do 
to step away and, and plan for anything, for any kind of improvement, and they haven't. And so the fact that you are moving on because it's your time to go through the next phase of your life, because everybody's on a different timeline, just because your timeline is shifting does not mean that like the world has to come catastrophically down. But to this person, it's going to feel a little bit catastrophic because they're having like an oh shit moment. They don't really have a solid ground to stand on anymore. You are so protected from this. I really, really need you to know that you are being released from this energy of the devil in reverse. We have the chariot here. This is the card that fell on top of it. You are walking away from an energy that has had you chained to it for a very long time. Could be seeing a lot of bats. Bats are coming in. I had a bat in my dream last night. It was very weird. This devil energy is kind of what's causing this back and forth. You know that this is what's best for you, but it's almost like, do I, do I make another person uncomfortable with this big of a change? I, am I willing to do that again? It's like you feel bad for being the reason that this person is going to have a faulty foundation. But you're not the reason this person has a faulty foundation. They are the reason. That's the thing here. You have to be comfortable in the fact that not everybody is like you. Not everybody I want to go in a different direction with that sentence. Some people have simply made their bed and they have to lay in it. You know, it, it, it's, I feel like that's kind of one of the things that you are here to teach people in this life. It's like, you're not responsible for handing out people's karma. I don't want to say that, but like your existence in people's worlds is so angelic. And I feel like they don't really even see the value of you because it's, it's just like such a comforting energy that you bring that people, they don't even really have time to like sort it out. They, they're, just, they're just immediately comforted by it. But some people take that comfort too far and they end up treating you like a punching bag or they end up treating you just like... The, the people that you have been around in this life have patterns of treating many people like punching bags. They have done this to many other people. They have been the ones to get away with this treatment. You know, I don't think they've ever been called out and I don't really think that they've ever been, not necessarily caught, but I don't think they've ever faced consequences of or from the things and the way that they treat people. I don't think that they really had consequences as big as the consequences that you give them because you give them everything before you give them nothing. Other people, I think, get up, fed up a little bit quicker. Um, you know, there could be conflict, there could be like power struggles. You know, I think a lot of people that have been around these people before are quicker to be bothered. And so there's like a shorter fuse and the relationship doesn't last that long, but for you, you're just in a whole different, thank God my legs are going numb. Are you getting down? <laughs> You're in a whole other ball field when it comes to how you think about the world and how you think about life. And so, um, you getting down? Ooh, my foot is so numb right now. You will pour anything that you have and everything you have into the structures that you become a part of because it's just, you want to help people. That's, that's part of this journey for you in this life is you help people in this life. You help them out. You are, it's almost like you help people with their manifestations. I'm seeing like this like fairy godmother energy where it's like you help people get their wishes. You help people make things come true for themselves. You help people build things up. But when it's time for you to go, it's time for you to go. And I think that the people that you've been around to help 
do this get so used to you being there that it's almost like they feel like the training wheels have been ripped off too early and then they're like flailing on this bicycle that they have no idea how to control but this whole entire time you've been teaching them how to ride the bike you know it's like you you've been guiding them along this whole time you've been teaching them, giving them suggestions. You've, you've been doing everything you possibly can to help them improve them, cir- them, their circumstances, but they have used your presence as an excuse not to do that. And so when you are finally like, okay, I'm getting this, this interesting analogy of super nanny where the Joe Frost, the, the super nanny woman, she would come into people's homes and she would help the parents learn how to parent and she would check up on them and she would help, you know, give examples for them. And then the time would be over and, you know, she would be done with her, like, help with these families. And some of the families took the lessons that she taught them and their relationships with their children improved. I don't know why this is coming through. But for some families, right after she left, like, things would just go right back to the chaos that they were in before. Like, the circumstances would just go right back to being horrible, cycles would repeat, and it was almost just like, what was the point? That's the, that's the scenario that you're in now, but you are not responsible for cleaning up this mess. You're moving on to the next thing. You're moving on to the next phase of your life. And so, I really think that when it comes to this phase of your life. Actually, I want to get one more row of cards because I don't want this reading to be too long, but I don't want this to just be about the situation. I want to help you with what to do about it. We have the Hierophant again, and we have the Ace of Cups in reverse. There's a really, really big fear here. I think this change is bigger than the rest of the changes that you've made this far. I I feel like you're in this phase of... You're in this, like, overthinking phase. Um, There's a lot of self-doubt happening. I feel like this is... I keep hearing this is the big kahuna. Um, up until now, it's like you moved from chapter to the next chapter to the next chapter in your life. This feels like it's a book ending within a series. The first book has ended and like with this final chapter, you're moving into a whole new book. Like you're writing a whole new book for yourself. I I think that you've learned all of the lessons that you could possibly learn up until this point. You've dealt with enough people with the same energy field that are just kind of takers um, that take advantage of people um, and that kind of deplete your energy. Um, I think that you have repeated this cycle enough to where this is the last time. So as you make this final break, I think that this is coming with um, permanence to it. And so this is kind of a, a test in your life of like, all right. You know, am am I fully done with this pattern, with with this, you know, habit of being there for people um, and overstaying my welcome almost? Like, I feel like you know um, that the time between you internally shutting down and the time where you take action on it is a little bit too long sometimes. Sometimes you get so caught up in how the other person is going to feel that you kind of stay longer than you should to make them comfortable. I think that you know that the 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 thought and the action have to be a little bit quicker. This is not to say to rush this process because if you rush this process, I don't think that you're gonna have um, any healing uh, accomplished. And I feel like that will cause like a repeated cycle and it's not gonna be a new book anymore. It's just gonna be like a tacked on chapter to a, a book that should have already ended. Um, it's like when a sequel sequel is created to a movie that didn't really need one. It was good on its own. We want to avoid that. You know, we want, we want to move on to a whole new story. So with that, this is where things get a little bit deeper for you. Let me just take a sip of my water. Sorry. 
this actually comes with a, a, a period of shadow work. Um, are you coming back, buddy? You made my legs so numb. Let me just clarify. I want to just clarify the Three of Swords. I think I've got the energy of it correct. Um, Five of Pentacles. I already have the Five of Pentacles on the Cat's deck as well. You have to believe that you are worthy enough of this. I think the big lesson in this is really about... Um, understanding that there there's no need to be in battle here i think the more you entertain the reaction of this other person the more it's going to cause this inner battle i think this is really a test of you understanding um and you detaching yourself from the feelings of this other person. I think that you have such an empathetic side to you and you have, again, like I said, such the, such a big heart. But again, it's to your detriment because you put other people ahead of you so much that you end, it, you end up giving so much. Like you're the type of person that would give other people the shirt off your back, but you end up wounded. You end up with a lack of resources. And this time around, it's all about like not only... Is it time to make this decision and understand that it's not your responsibility to put out other people's fires, but you cannot deplete yourself of your own resources to make sure that this is this person is comfortable on your way out. It's about being firm, firm in this decision. Hi, come here. boy <laughs> um it's it's about believing that you deserve this enough it, this this is about like worthiness almost um I, I feel like you have repeated such a similar cycle so many times that um it's almost like you don't know how much better it could get for you because it feels like every time you go through this cycle it kind of leads you into another cycle with either a different person yeah we have the three of swords again um we have the four of swords again we have the two of wands let me see it just seems like you have no idea how good it could be because you don't let up until up until now you haven't let things get better you have just this image of yourself that you're you're here to serve others only i think that there needs to be kind of an understanding on your side that while you are here to help others in this life you are not here to help others at your own detriment you are not here to lift other people up by dimming yourself down you know, you are here to be a light and let your light illuminate further and further so that other people are affected and they can lift themselves up. I think that's that's kind of the confusing thing about this is that you have sacrificed so much for the in for the sake of other people, but the real um, the real path for you in this life is to fulfill yourself because as you fulfill yourself that causes a domino effect of healing if you are seen fulfilling yourself and you stop at nothing to improve your life and to prove your circumstances improve your self-perception that is contagious and i think as you attract that energy into your life of you know making decisions that fulfill your emotions, you, you, that bring you the emotional abundance, I think you're going to start to attract connections that also have that same mindset. I think before, the reason why you attracted the same kind of energies that just took and took and took is because you had this, like, at-your-service at mentality where it's like your self-worth was a little bit 
like it fell short. It, you really only felt worthy when you did something right, but it's like there was test after test after test and after a while, it, it didn't really feel so good to ace them because you were giving so much of yourself to try to make the, the other person, the other person giving you the test happy. Now you, you understand that there's no such thing as tests. The only, no, there's just no such thing as tests. You don't need to be trying to do the right thing for another person. You don't need to try to please another person. The only person that you need to be good with is yourself. And so if you can stick by that mentality, without a doubt, with no like wavering in that, that's contagious. And so it's going to cause a period of grief because you are going to be stepping away from the energies that you've known for most of your life. You're going to be moving into a very new place with a whole new structure of living. Um, I think that as you move into this, it's really, really important that you take your time and that you check in with yourself often. Because I think that you are going to have a little bit of a wounded heart moving into this. I think that there is, again, there's going to be grief from losing these connections. I think that some of your relationships may not, um, you know, last a long time. But these are relationships that weren't necessarily supposed to last for a long time. These were energetic ties that were yours to cut. Um, because, again, you've, you've guided these people on their bikes they knew that the training wheels were going to come off eventually. It is not your problem that they didn't listen to you when you tried to teach them how to ride without, you know, training wheels, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I just really, I really, really think it's important that you keep yourself focused on how you're doing. I think it's really important that you understand that stay, staying in the same cycle is going to continue to deplete you. And in order to go from the Ten of Swords to the Ten of Cups, and in order to bring in this emotional fulfillment, it does require pulling these swords out of your back. And these swords are these obligations to other people. You're no longer obligated to live for other people. You, it's now time for you to live for yourself. It's not going to be easy, but the abundance and the love that is on the other side is absolutely unmatched. I want to just go ahead and, and get you know, a couple more cards to get any closing messages. Um, let me go ahead. We have strength. We have strength here. I, I think that that's such a perfect, especially with all this yellow, I really see it as like a really, really strong solar plexus energy. This is joy. This is confidence. This is self-esteem. I really, really think that you are coming into such an important and necessary relationship with yourself that um, the only thing that you're going to be sacrificing is your ties to people that kind of took advantage of you in the first place. I really see that you're kind of like this angelic creature and this lion is like this energy that has been trying to take from you you know it, it's it's looking like it's loud and scary but it's tails between its legs it's all bark it's no bite you know this person is not as powerful as you think um this person does not have as much control over you as you think and i feel like if you can just tame the situation by staying even tempered and calm and and just move forward with grace there's no need to get emotional about it there's no need to fight about it there's just you've made your decision and it's time to move on um they're going to have their temper tantrum but they can do that behind a closed door you know like you don't need to be a part of that that's not your responsibility to entertain uh to put up with um you're a grown adult, as is this other person or these other energies. So um, that's kind of what I'm, what I'm getting here. I do feel like this energy has so many pieces to it. Um, so if anybody has any questions or wants me to go into any part a little bit deeper, um, I'm happy to. I just, I feel like that's kind of, I feel like I'm at the end of a rope here with this channel. So yeah, I, I 
I hope that if you are resonating with this energy, you understand that you are worth so much more than the things that you have been sacrificing and putting yourself through for the sake of keeping other people comfortable. You know, it's really about you right now. Um, and I, I don't say that lightly. I really mean it. It's really time for you to close the book of the past and start a whole new one. There is no rule book. There is no, you know, again, there's no authority that you need to be following the rules of. The only authority that you have in your life is you. So I really hope that that resonated and could help even one person. Um, I'm rooting for you if this resonated for you. I know that you can do this. I know that this is a tough time, but on, on the other side of this, there is just so much joy. I mean, we have the world, we have the Empress, we have the Strength card, we have the Six of Pentacles, we have the Star card. Like, there is a tough time immediately ahead, but once you move through this tough time, and when I say through, I mean through. I don't mean avoid all of the confrontations and, and move about it, you know, in a way that's kind of roundabout and lie your way through it. Like, I mean move through it. Be like a seahorse. A seahorse doesn't avoid the waves. A seahorse doesn't go over the things. The seahorse goes right through it. The only way out is through. And you have got this. You are strong enough. You have been through this cycle way too many times to repeat it again. So that's all I got for you. I will see you on TikTok soon. And in the meantime, Bailey and I wish you a wonderful night. <laughs>